Hey guys, Chris here. Wanted to talk to you about a new helicopter coming to market that uh, I've had the opportunity to test for a few months now. Uh, really seems robust. Seems like something that I'm definitely going to fly. And in fact, I'm going to tell you a little bit about it and why I like it and um, hopefully when you'll be able to get them. Talk to you soon. Here we go. All right, so first of all, this is the XL Power 520. It's a 500 size helicopter, very light. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the parts and then we'll go over the weights and the blades and everything else. Um, it will it will actually accommodate up to 12S. Really, it'd be kind of tight, it'd be a little heavy and it flies so good on 6S, I don't see the need. Now, what I do think's cool is I've tried everything from a 3300 mil, milliamp 6S to a 5000 milliamp. Now on the Gen's Ace, it's a longer, thinner battery. I'm not going to get another pack out than some of the other packs. So you need to kind of measure the distance to see. But I've been told, and looking at the dimensions, I don't see why it won't. It will actually hold a 5600 milliamp milliamp pack uh, at 33 i can get about the flight time of your normal electric helicopter with the 5000 pack i was getting right at six minutes at 3000 head speed that's right this thing is light and amazing uh, of course with the gearing this motor was getting hot at that head speed but I've tried and I've tried to speed up the wear process over the last few months to see how well the bearings are going to hold up, the parts are going to hold up, and after 100 flights, this thing's still in great shape. Uh, so, it's got a slant 106 main gear, got a 13 tooth pinion, works really well, belt drive. Yes, it's on top of the main gear, but you actually have an E-clip. So once you pop the clip, the whole assembly will drop out without problem. Uh, it takes many servos. On the tail, you actually have the option to run a mini on one side, full size on the other. So you have your choice. Uh, I would have used all minis, but I didn't have a tail at the time, so I did use a standard. It's worked fine. 100 amp speed control fits on there good. Has the braces on the frame. It actually comes with plenty thick bearing blocks which I ran for the first 100 flights and I just swapped them out to this optional one to see what the difference is. This is two, we can't tell because of the brace on the front, but the two bearing blocks are here. These are eight millimeters thick. That's right, eight millimeters thick. That's thicker than what's on my 700. You have a 10 millimeter main shaft, eight millimeter spindle shaft. You've got the grips of a 550 which make it really, really robust. Now, with all this stuff, you would think that we're adding quite a bit of weight. Also, if you don't like the yellow boom, it comes with a yellow and a black boom, so you choose what you like. The landing gear, even though you see it's, it's very stiff, but it's very, very flexible, as you can see. Um, I'm not going to do it, but I have seen the designer uh, actually bend these almost in half, and it worked well. Uh, the pulleys seem to work fine. Uh, that does look like something that was off of a Mikado design, which, again, it works well. You know, it's off a few others, too. But he, there's a lot of unique stuff on this helicopter. Um you know, similarities, sure, but every helicopter now is going to have some similarities, which we'll talk about the 700 in a minute that has very few. You know, I can see similarities where 
the top section without, you know, like these supports remind me of an align, but the top section of the frame actually reminds me a little between the Mikado and the Align because I checked it with the 480 and it's different dimensions and at the bottom it's completely different than the 480. So uh, I, I like that, that he's using the knowledge to change it for the better. Also, I went 100 flights without these, but he has an optional. Uh, let me find some. This is an optional frame support for each side. And it also adds a support here and a support here. Without them, they were fine. And I actually thought because of the thickness of the frame that possibly you would get some flex in the tail, which is another reason I ran high head speed for a while just to see what it was going to do. But it actually held up fine. So now I'm putting them on there to see the difference. Uh, in a way, I was hoping to crash it before I added these, uh, but in a way I did not want to. Uh, now that the stiffeners are on here, I have no doubt this is gonna be very, very stiff. Uh, on the boom, pretty simple. Slides through two brackets. You have two screw holes to tighten the boom. I do like this also on the, hold on, let me turn this around. Okay, so as you know on the guide for your control rod, how many times have you put the ball link ends on and forgot to put that on? Well this, you unscrew it and the whole thing is actually a strap with rounded ends. So it doesn't matter, this goes on after the whole thing, the way it works. So that's really, really nice. Uh, I can appreciate it. I also like that the way the supports are off the frame. And then here, instead of being on the side and screwed in like most helicopters, they're actually on the bottom with a nut and oddly enough, because I've seen some pictures of the manufacturer's crashes and talked to them about it, and it really appears that as the boom tweaks, it twists, and it doesn't damage the boom supports near as bad as it does on many other helicopters that I've seen. So another great design. Uh, let's see what else. Um, very beefy swash plate for a 500 series helicopter. Um, and before we go to the tail, I'll tell you the reason all this is so, so big and so robust is because he also, they also, XL Power also sells a 550 boom stretch kit. So you can run up to a 570 blade. Uh, so you can either run from a 425 to a 520. The new kit comes with a 520 blade, even though I've got 480s on it right now. But you can run from a 480 to a, a 425, really. You could run to a 520. And then with the boom extension kit, which is $25 retail, and that comes with the boom, the, the supports, and the belt for, you know, less... 25 bucks, 24, 25 bucks, and you can stretch it. And I have no doubt that you wouldn't have to change anything but that stretch kit and blades to make it fly. The motor, this 40, 20, 1100, I've flown it from 2300 head speed to a 3100 head speed. It doesn't like it at 31, it obviously gets hot, but as long as you don't run it, you know, back to back. It, it the, It's a Scorpion motor. It's held up great. Uh, again, trying to make it wear faster so I can see where the weak points are. The problem is, there are no weak points, so it's not a problem. Uh, it's seriously one of the most robust helicopters I've seen in its weight, in its size. The tail, 
No more pieces on the sides. One piece tail box. So, how do you change the pulley, right? Love this too. Hang on. There we go. All right, so we have, let's see if I can do this and hold the camera. Okay, we have one grub screw here, right? Undo it. That ought to be good. Pop the link, which I already did for this reason. Grab it. Pull it all the way out. Simple to replace this shaft. Again, set screw in here. It's just a single shaft. The gear's not on the shaft, so it makes it very, very inexpensive to change that shaft if you had to. Now, the neat thing is, with the boom, if you are in a crash, whereas normally you'd have to take out your main gear, everything, pull the entire belt out, all you have to do here press it down and pop it out and then slide the entire boom back and off without replacing it all uh, very simple to put back together too I use a uh, actually use a pair of reverse pliers put it in to stretch the belt a little bit to get the pulley back in line, slide the shaft in, slides right over the teeth of the, the swash arm, or the, the follower, or I'm sorry, the link arm, whatever you want to call it that works the back grips. So, done. That's easy enough. It's so simple to work. Low uh, parts count. Pop the E-clip off. Drop the whole main gear, pull the whole head straight up. It does have a collar, which I do like to adjust for any slop. Get it out, done. Uh, it's just such a good helicopter. I can't say enough about this thing. And it, it, another thing that makes it so great, on top of being so robust. Actually, with the electronics, mini HV servos, 4020, 1100, 11, uh, 100 amp ESC, 480 blades, with all electronics, no batteries, the weight of this helicopter is 1862.88 grams. So just under 1900 grams with electronics. So if you make this into a five, 50 running 570 blades it becomes a very light helicopter uh, in fact with 520 blades instead of the 480s just flying as a 500 at 2600 head speed to me because i'm used to a little heavier helicopter and i'd like it to be a little heavier um, i put the 480s on it because with 520s it's amazingly light it, it's so floaty so as a 550 with 570s it's got to be incredibly light uh, with batteries uh, because the castle is what i had at the time i went with it don't use the 5 amp bec obviously in a castle with high voltage servos because as they power up they pull more amps than any other time and what's it do it shuts down the msh icon or uh, you know, if you're using Mikado V-Bar, B-Stex, whatever. The B-Stex may take it, but I know the other two definitely won't. And therefore, it won't start back up. So I had to run a receiver pack temporarily. And the only receiver pack I had, well, I've been, you know, I say that I had. I haven't replaced it. It's been running so good for that 100 flights. I've been using a 2200 milliamp pack. So I've got a receiver pack that weighs 708 or 127.9, so say 128 grams, and a 5,000 milliamp 6S, which if you wanted lighter, you could do because it weighs 708 grams. So I have a combined weight with everything and a receiver pack that you really don't need that weight uh, on 
very short blades, 480s, and it comes out to uh, 5.95 pounds, so just under 6 pounds, or it comes out to, um, where did I write it? Forgive me. It is... Twenty six ninety eight eighty eight. So say twenty seven hundred grams or five point nine five pounds. Which still, even with the extra weight that I really didn't need, just adding it to see what I could do and everything else, I've got a helicopter that weighs under six pounds, which I could lighten up even more, putting the stock blades, the five twenties, on it, and. With a 5,000 milliamp pack at around 2,600 head speed, which it flies amazing at that head speed, you can get almost seven minutes out of it. So with a 5,600 milliamp pack and 570 blades with a stretch kit, you could probably easily get seven, seven and a half minutes. Now we're getting into nitro times. Now I'm not going to say that for sure because, again, I tested at 3,100 head speed, got around... You know, just under six minutes. At 2,600, I'm getting close to seven minutes. And that's with, you know, pushing the helicopter hard. Even when I push it the entire flight as hard as I can fly it, uh, hard 3D, it's still getting six and a half minutes. It's insane how, how well this helicopter is built and flown. And the reason I tell you all this is because it comes from a Chinese company, which... Again, no disrespect to the Chinese. I love them. I get many products from them. Uh, but they do have a history of reproducing many helicopters. So I was a little leery of building it because I didn't know if it would actually be a unique helicopter. Well, thank goodness that somebody talked to me for weeks and weeks into trying the helicopter and building it when it was sent to me. I... I absolutely, I had gotten into flying only 700s, was not flying a 500 class anymore over the last few years, and I fly this every single day. I love this helicopter. I mean, just to show you, I've got, and then two more in the trailer, the same 700 with tons of parts, That and that's all I flew. But now, all I fly is the this 500. This is the original canopy, which I think you're still going to have the option to get. And then the new canopy actually has a magnetic back, comes around, seals itself, and it's cut off straight here. It's really a nice looking canopy. Uh, easy to get on, easy to get off. Also, another thing here, the way this is made, you have these carbon fiber pieces here. So if you're in a crash, usually, well, one, you can see how flexible it makes it because of the way it's done with those. So possibly nothing, but even if it's hard enough, it will probably snap this before it really damages the canopy beyond, you know, repair. Uh, most of us fly cracked canopies, spider cracks everywhere, but many times it, they're just too destroyed to even fly. I have high hopes that this will handle the crash and still be able to fly that canopy. Uh, and speaking to the owner and the designer, he's crashed quite a few times. And because of the main shaft, spindle shaft, and the way that the skids are made, and the design of the whole tail. He's had many crashes where he some he hadn't even had to replace the boom. But many times he's had to replace the boom and the main gear. But the main gear was only about 33% of the time even. Uh, if you take that into account, you can't crash a 250 size helicopter for what it would cost to repair this. Other than the blades. But even the cost of the blades makes up on the parts that you don't have to replace. Therefore, you're still in the same price range. And you get to fly a bird that flies much bigger. Uh, more, I mean, it feels like a 600 helicopter. And talking to the guys who have been testing the 550 stretch with 570 blades, they said it flies 
almost, you know, as far as weight, the weight ratio, it's like flying a 700 helicopter. And, you know, for a price point of $499 map price uh, with blades, it, it's hard to beat that and be able to get into a 500 size helicopter or for $25 more, a 550 size helicopter. Uh, I've been testing this now for several months and tested it with all different types of setups, belt tensions. In fact, let's see, I had the belt so tight at one point, you can see what it was doing coming across the pulley where it was pulling so tight on the pulley. Therefore, not only was it hard on the belt, it was hard on the bearings here. It was hard on the bearings here. Um, it was also hard on the bearings here. And again, I'm still running the same belt, same bearings, and I'm about to take the head apart to redo the thrust bearings and take the tail apart to look at the thrust bearings here. But based on the way they're working, I don't even really know that they're gonna need to be re-greased. They're smooth, they're working fine. The hell he's just not wearing. It looks brand new almost. Uh, anyway, you know, I hope this helps your decision to go out and look for this helicopter because uh, I buy into a company usually, not a brand, which is why I'm flying an older 700. I love it. I love the designer of it. He's a great guy. Uh, heli new helicopter companies are it's just hard to make it now. But I spent two days talking to husband and wife team out of China that, that own this company. He designed it. They build everything in-house. All They purchased the machines to do it. No reproductions. And I just don't see them going anywhere. I really think that in the next year, you'll see this as a mainstream helicopter like you do a line and like you do SAB and it's just a great helicopter. And then on top of that, which I'll do a video soon on, had the opportunity to see the prototype 700 at the Ursha event in Indiana. The 700 has a 15 millimeter main shaft, 12 millimeter spindle shaft. The boom is huge. It's probably the size of three 700 booms together. Uh, it's it's just amazingly robust, and he's been testing it. They crashed, and from what, again, it was a video, and it looks like it went in at probably 60 miles an hour, buried under a, a piece of wood, and main shaft, and a couple other small parts. The boom was fine. The head was fine. Tail was fine. You know, it, other than blades, it probably was a... $35 repair. And for a 700 size helicopter, that's super cheap. I can't, you know, I work on many helicopters for many people. I sell many helicopters and you can't re repair a 500 for that. So do yourself a favor, check them out at XL Power. Um, no, I don't have it with me and I apologize, but I think it's xlpower.com. We'll have several places selling them in the state, in the United States soon. Um, they're starting to show up all over Europe and Asia. And we hope within the next few weeks that they'll be all over the U.S. too. I have several people I've let fly it. Uh, because Again, I'm not worried if they crash it. And I've had beginners fly it, advanced pilots fly it. And it really, really is a good helicopter. Um, it's easy to build, easy to set up. It just works. Anyway, guys, appreciate your time. Uh, come check us out at myheli.net. We've got a new website where we're combining with some other people, big things. So definitely check us out in the next few weeks. You'll see great things from us also. Um, there is a company, Toys, oh, uh, See, I, I apologize. If you look at Toy Store in Muncie or Hobby Store, either one, it'll show up either way. In Muncie, Indiana, they're going to also have this helicopter within the next few weeks. 
Uh, so do your favor, self a favor, check them out on the internet, see some flights with it, and make this your next helicopter. Because, I, again, I don't talk about a lot of helicopters this good. I try to talk about the good and the bad of every helicopter. But really and truthfully, there's just not much I can find wrong with this thing. Uh, it, it's I can't say enough about it. Anyway, appreciate your time, guys. Hope this helps you make a decision on a new helicopter and gives you some information. If you've got any questions or anything else, find me on Facebook, um, Chris Katsoulis. Also, while you're on Facebook, go check out uh, RC Heli Hangout and CP Helis, two really good groups, and rchelihangouts.com. RCHeliHangout.com is a new form. It's growing fast. I think it's going to be better than Heli Freak was. So, or Run Rider. You know, nothing against them. Person's great guy, but it's fast growing. People are on those sites. They'll help you build. They'll help you with setup questions, problems, uh, you know, purchases, anything. Really, really good guys. Anyway. Uh, I appreciate your time and have a great day guys.